Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna talk about Phalaenopsis orchids, but not the ones we find in flower shops. Those ones are busy at the moment. They're growing all of the flower spikes and all of their buds, so we're gonna talk about these maybe in March. Hopefully, maybe in April, who knows. But for now, let's make a little update on the novelties. And when I say novelties, I refer to something a little bit confusing, I have to say. We've talked about this before. There is a group of Phalaenopsis which uh, some orchid experts consider novelty hybrids. Pretty much they refer to the Polychylus subgenus of Phalaenopsis, which includes the Violacea, the Bellina, the Amboinensis, all of those summer blooming orchids crossed in between them or with the Phalaenopsis subgenus. So the term novelty, take it with a grain of salt. I cannot really say this is a novelty, this is not, or these are the particularities of a novelty and these are not, because sometimes the complexity of the hybrid is so big that we're gonna see a lot of the Phalaenopsis subgenus but some of the polychylus subgenus traits as well. So is that a novelty or not? I don't know. It's a new hybrid, so maybe it's a novelty. So for the sake of this video, I'm not going to talk about all of the usual Phalaenopsis that you find in flower shops. I'm going to talk about everything else, even the species, even if they're not necessarily polychylus. So that said, let's just make an update on some of my Phalaenopsis. Now, if my little monologue there confused you, not to worry, I'll link it down below to the AOS website so you'll learn more about the Phalaenopsis of genera. And I hope that article is more coherent than what I just said. I was just making sure that the roots don't bother the other orchids. Phalaenopsis roots can actually be a little invasive, if I can call them like that. They can grow to other pots, they can bother other orchids, it's not nice. I purchased from Orchids Deluxe. This is Phalaenopsis KS Super Zebra. I'll try to show you some photos on the corner of the screen. Most of the orchids I'm gonna show you today, they're not the type that produce a lot of flowers or a cascade. They're more like the Violacea and Bellina, if you know them. Very few flowers, potentially very fragrant, and with those waxy thick petals. So as you could see from the picture, this one looks like a zebra with shades of magenta or pink and I absolutely love the contrast. This one has been doing pretty, pretty great. Most of my Phalaenopsis are in self-watering with Leca. I find that this is an okay medium for them. I'll show you one of them which is struggling. I'm testing Sphagnomos to see if there is any difference, just to be sure, just for the sake of documentation. Most of them though, they're in Leca and they're doing pretty great. This one has matured one leaf since I purchased it, and of course, quite a lot of roots. And most recently, I discovered that it's also producing a flower spike. Now, the season of blooming for these orchids, typically it is summertime, depending on their parentage, of course, but they are actually just starting to spike, I'm noticing. This is the middle of winter here, but I have pretty mild winters. So for them, it's like spring, to be fully honest. Um, so it makes sense that if they're summer bloomers, they will start to spike in spring. For me, the flowering season for these orchids, considering the Bellina and Violacea, starts from June, it ends in December. It makes sense for them to start to spike right now. And by the way, if you don't remember the hole with these orchids, check it down below because I actually filmed it. If you don't know the nursery, it's like the Disneyland of Phalaenopsis orchids, to be fully honest. It's a wonderful nursery and I do intend to purchase more stuff from them because I didn't actually see anywhere else this much variety when it comes to the novelty section of the Phalaenopsis. Alrighty, next to it, we have an orchid which I purchased from eBay from Catacetum 2. I always wanted this one. Um, well, kinda. <laughs> this is a hybrid. This is Phalaenopsis Penang Girl, which I always wanted, crossed with Violacea. So it should be an interesting uh, hybrid. Let's take a look at the root system because this one is actually potted in a transparent pot. They seem to actually really enjoy this setup, so I'm happy with that. It means that I can actually make some economy when it comes to medium, but you know, in the end, it's the orchid who decides. So I'm happy whenever I have something that works in Leca and in this setup. So this one again has a little flower spike developing here. Most of these orchids have been purchased last year from the beginning to the end of the year. Uh, last year I did develop my collection a little bit more, so she's doing really, really nice. One thing that I actually really like with these types of orchids is the glossiness and just the color of the leaves. 
They are lighter colored when it comes to their foliage than the typical Phalaenopsis, that's absolutely normal. They have this really vivid green. I do like this feature of them. Okay, so back there, this is not a novelty, this is actually a species, but it is a variegated version. Phalaenopsis amabilis variety art. She has a flower spike, you already knew that. This acts like a typical Phalaenopsis. It is not a Polychylus subgenus, it is actually the Phalaenopsis subgenus. So this one, I showed it to you a few weeks ago. This is the one with the magenta or actually variegated roots as well. Some of them are beautiful. They're magenta, actually they have magenta tips, but not all of them. So now we have a flower spike which has variegated sheaths. It's gonna be really interesting to see the flowers, but they're gonna be white. It's a white species, so I'm not really expecting anything, but who knows. In the back there, we have another orchid, which I purchased from Orchids Deluxe. This is, oh, this is a intergeneric. This is Ascacentra miniatum crossed with Doritis pulcherima. Doritis is now a Phalaenopsis as well, so it's a Phalaenopsis hybrid. This one doesn't appear to have a flower spike. I just checked it now. I'm not entirely sure about its blooming season. Since it is an intergeneric with an Ascacentrum, which is a vendaceous orchid, I believe at the moment, it might be summertime for this one. So I don't see any old flower spikes. This is a young plant. Um, she's doing great, I just don't see any flower spikes. I am, however, observing something that is very, very typical to ask Ascocentrums. I'm sorry, I'm bothered by fungus gnats. <laughs> and when I inhale air, I don't want to inhale the fungus gnat. All right, so I do have other Ascocentrums. They all do this. They have this reddish tinge in bright light. And under my LED panel, things are really bright. So I'm noticing this one is borrowing that trait of the Ascocentrum. And I'm really, really hoping to have some blooms really soon from this orchid because she is beautiful. She's that really goldeny color that I love. This is another intergeneric, but this is a very young plant. And Ascanopsis Iren Dupkin. Yet again, we have an Ascocentrum crossed with a Phalaenopsis, so we have pretty much the same traits as the bigger one, but you can see this is definitely a lot tinier. No flower spike. I did not expect any flower spikes, but she is again doing very well in the setup, which is nice, means I can be economical. But again, you can see the redness in the foliage, which is typical of the Ascocentrums. Moving on, back there we have a bigger hybrid. This is a very mature orchid, if I can call it like that. This is Phalaenopsis Tyne Sheen Fly Eagle. We had her in bloom. She creates variable flowers, and by this I mean Flowers which can have yellow or red petals, but the sequence and exactly how they look like, it's always going to be different, which is just fantastic. She is a Speciosa or a Tetraspeci one, depending how it's called right now. I'm not sure about the consensus. She's a hybrid of that, and she's growing two flower spikes. Again, the season for this one is rather summery, so I'm expecting blooms in June from this one, but it's okay, I have patience. In front of it, hiding behind another one, is the Phalaenopsis Orchid World Bonnie Vasquez. This is a beautiful, beautiful orchid, which looks very much like a hybrid I used to have a long, long time ago, but this is the actual novelty hybrid. This is a younger plant, as you can see. The good thing with these types of orchids is that they can actually spike at a young age. I feel like this is way too young still, so not sure if I will have blooms from this one this year, but it's okay. She is actually growing very nice roots, and she's doing pretty, pretty great. In front of it, another one from Orchid Garden. This is Phalaenopsis Dragon Tree Eagle. Oh, I think this is the one you guys chose for me. I didn't actually look if this one has any flower spikes. I just checked. I don't actually see anything just yet, but it is actually vegetatively growing. So you can see here I have another leaf forming, which is okay. I do believe this is a rather young orchid. Judging by the size though, I think she could put on a spike this year, but I'm not entirely sure. We're gonna see. She's okay though. Here we have the Phalaenopsis ludemaniana, one that I always, 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 always wanted. This one I purchased from eBay from Orchid Man last year, probably at the beginning of the year, I think. And she is growing a flower spike, which you can see right there. 
again doesn't have any issues adapting to self-watering and leka all of these orchids they are actually pretty easy going um, comparable to their let's say flower shop counterparts however they have much slower growth in my opinion and also they do require just a fraction more babying or more care i feel like they do prefer to stay rather moist um, unlike the other phalaenopsis we're acquainted with and they can bounce back slower. I don't feel like they're as vigorous as the uh, hybrids, but then again, that's why we say hybrid vigor, but they are actually pretty forgiving plants. Now, the Ludemanniana is supposed to have these really beautiful magenta flowers. Now, I know you might say, oh, but wait, didn't you say you don't like purple flowers? There's a certain shade of purple that I don't like. Magenta, especially sweet magenta, I like. And if you think about magenta on a white background, oh, that's just beautiful. So yeah, I'm weird with colors. I don't dismiss all magentas and pinks, just some of them. In front, somewhere, where is you? There she be. Okay, this is the only one I received in a rather poor shape when it comes to the root system. This is Phalaenopsis Brother Glory. I think it's one of the yellow ones from Orchids Deluxe. It doesn't look like one of their tags, but I remember it is from them. Anyway, this one didn't have a good root system. So I put it in sphagnum moss as the traditional medium for these orchids is actually sphagnum moss just to encourage wood growth and at the same time i was curious to see if they would grow better or develop better in this type of setup although i can't complain about the other setup anyway this was a special case i just wanted it to have a more friendly medium let's say and moss is always super friendly to any orchid that's why I put her here and I'm just monitoring her progress. But you can see she's rather tiny. We do have that root. Um, she came with this damage. I don't know what it is, but it, it's not advancing. So I didn't want to cut the leaf. When I received it, it didn't have this leaf. It only had a bottom leaf, which was not looking great. You can see it's going to be shed now. And this one, which already had this damage. So I didn't want to remove the damage because I didn't really have viable leaves. In the meantime, it put on this leaf, which is better than what we had, but still she's in that pretty much critical state in which I don't want to make her adjust to Lika or things of the sorts. I want her to put on a good root system and afterwards we're gonna see what we're gonna do. So I think I'm gonna keep her like this and just make a difference for my personal knowledge and yours, of course, about the two setups, see if there's any actual difference. In the back there, we have the Bellina and the Violacea, which were in bloom all summer long. So not going to insist on them. They will start to put on new leaves very, very soon. Here we have the Red Novelty. This is Sogo Grape. She's been through an adjustment period. The roots were not great, but now she's kind of overflowing. So that's great. The leaves though, they were created maybe almost a year. No, not really nine months ago when this orchid didn't really have enough roots. Now she does, but she didn't create any leaf in the meantime. As I was saying, these orchids have slower growth. So she looks a little weird leaf wise, but she's spiking and she does have a great root system at the moment. And here in the front, we have the newer Phalaenopsis that I won't insist. I just purchased these ones from Orchids Deluxe. This is the I'm not gonna read this. There are the hybrids with long names. So if you missed the unboxing for this order from Orchids Deluxe, it was my birthday order. Check it down below in the description. I got a lot of Phalaenopsis from them, also from um, Orchid Garden. They're all kind of spiking, so it's going to be a really, really nice show when they will bloom. But as you can see, there is quite a lot of variety with these hybrids. Yeah, these ones create more flowers. You can see they're big, they have darker foliage. It's a genetical thing. But being that they are complex hybrids and they have some polychylus uh, representatives in their parentage, are they novelties? Are they not? I don't know. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. They're new hybrids, I believe. At least this one I think is a new hybrid. I do not know if it's correct to call them novelties. But anyway, this has been my collection. I'm looking to see if I missed anything. There is another one that I forgot to show you, my Tetraspis or actually Speciosa. This is a weird one. I always had weird individuals from this particular species. I don't know if she's completely happy in this setup. She is producing a new flower spike there and root wise, she appears to be okay, but not really. I don't know. I don't know. There's something I don't like about this orchid and its evolution. So I might actually move it. I don't know. 
Right now I just placed it separately just to remind myself to actually take care of it. Uh, but yeah, I still have it. The flower spikes are still okay, they're still growing. It is creating new stuff, but I'm not happy with the root system. Do you see this? No, this is not supposed to happen. And I see some concerning stuff in the back there as well. Do you see that? No, there's something not okay with this orchid for whatever reason. In its defense, I've always lost my tetraspaces and speciosas to either root issues, either stem issues, it is a little finicky for me, but it might just be a coincidence. So yeah, not a very, very, very big collection, but I'm working on it. Um, I think I do have a good climate for them. These are generally hot growers. The other Phalaenopsis, maybe more intermediate to warm growing, these are very hot growers. So I'm thinking this summer I might actually place them in my IKEA shelves, the ones with the little circles. We'll see what I'm going to do because some of these orchids are in tiny pots, so they will not sit there, but I am seriously thinking to keep them in the shade, but outside on my terrace. No sunshine for these because they are actually coming from very, very hot climates and theoretically they should do okay on my terrace. Um, I'm still debating because it appears that my shelf is actually good for them, the light is good, but I don't know, we'll see. I'm thinking about it, but I do still have time until March when everybody goes outside again. So this has been my collection of novelties and summer bloomers, let's call them like that. Slowly but surely I'm gonna make a proper collection. So I wish you all a great weekend and you know the drill. Like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As and other fun orchid subjects. And if you like YouTube to notify you whenever I upload a new video, just turn on notifications for my channel. Also, if you are interested in my setup and you didn't really get how this medium is called, check the description down below. I always list what I use in my grow space. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!